Welcome back to the channel, guys. How are y'all doing? It is Saturday evening, July 31st. At, it's almost 8 o'clock. And just finished dinner a little while ago. My other two videos that I did today have gone up. I had my Pippa package that I recorded my video of, and then we had our Vegemite, me and my son had um, the Vegemite Challenge taste test. Coffee. I have to have the coffee this evening. But I just thought I would come on and do some diamond painting and chat with y'all. I am currently working on Alice in the White Rabbit House. This is one of the diamond paintings that I am doing for a friend of mine who does not like to do squares. And this is my leather chair squeaking. <laughs> Got to find a different chair that doesn't squeak. But I thought I would jump on and hang out with you for a bit. We had a really nice storm today. We finally had some measurable amount of rain in my part of Vegas. For the past two weeks, been a lot of rain in the area, but we haven't seen a lot of it. But we've felt the aftermath. We've gotten the humidity. So it's been miserable. And as much as I loved today's rain, we're going to suffer tomorrow. It's going to be miserable. Hold on one second, please. <sighs> okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Child interruptions, even as teenagers. But, um, yes, this is a painting I'm working on for um, my friend who does not like to do squares. I've got London. I had to put away that London diamond painting is. It's a beautiful painting, but, oh, my God, it has got me beside myself the drills, and I don't know. I love Diamond Art Club. I will always love Diamond Art Club, but I look forward to them getting their new squares. As I think starting in August or September, their new supplier will, they'll actually be putting the new squares in their kits. They will not be going back and changing out the squares in the already packaged kits. But um, in all the new kits, from the understanding I have, we'll have the new squares. And I'm there for it. I cannot wait. Um, I think since they're uh, already set up with their new supplier, I think they're just kind of using the bottom of the barrel drills. Um, I know, I mean, and I'm not dogging on Diamond Art Club in any way, fashion, just, you know, shape or form. They are my favorite diamond painting company. But, and you're going to have problems with squares with any company. I don't care who it's with, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Diamond Art Club's new squares are going to be like. So, did anybody um, purchase from the new releases this morning? Um, there was, of course, some that I want, but I'm still on my no-buy. So, they got put on my wish list. I do have two diamond paintings coming this week that were gifted to me by one of my subscribers. So um, I will be doing an unboxing um, later on this week. They've reached out, you know, multiple times and asked me, you know, we've talked about my wish list and stuff. So they wanted to um, get me diamond paintings. It's actually the person that I'm doing these um, squares for. She's so appreciative of me doing these for her that she wanted to um, thank me. 
So she purchased two of the um, diamond paintings that are on my wish list. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'll do the unboxings, but then they're going to get put away because my focus right now is doing the diamond paintings for her. Um, there's no rush for me to do the ones that I have because I diamond paint to keep my keep my mind occupied. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and to keep the boredom at bay. Um, so there's, you know, and as I've mentioned in my other videos, all the diamond paintings that I've completed that I've kept for myself are stacked up in the craft room because framing is too expensive. I still have to try and find a way to frame them. Um, my husband does not want me to just do a canvas um, framing because he thinks they look tacky. Um, I don't think they look bad, but I would like to see a nice frame around them. And he does not want me just to tack them to the wall. So, um, yeah, he wants, I don't know why I'm single placing. Um, he wants real frames, like some kind of a, a real frame or making a frame, you know, with wood and trim around it. But right now with the cost of wood, that's not going to happen anytime soon. This, the cost of wood is so ridiculously expensive right now. And... I really don't know why, but then everything's ridiculous, ridiculously expensive, right? So <clears throat> working on this, I did get out my um, Josephine wall. It's a tit tit titanium or whatever it is, an Oberon. I worked on that for a little bit. The other night, got quite a bit done. Um, I just wanted to work with a bunch of um, ABs and that particular part on there was the sky where there's like a ton of the bluish purple ABs. And the six was wrong here. So um, yeah, I worked on that for a bit. Um, I'm working on a shawl, trying to all the things that I want to do. And there's just not enough hours of the day. And one of my biggest thing is, is all I want to do is diamond paint. It's like, I want to crochet, but the first thing I do when I wake up is check my email, you know, check Facebook, respond to messages. All that while I'm drinking my coffee, and then right away, I just want to diamond paint. Um, I guess with diamond painting, it's you know it's more simple. It's crocheting. You got to pay attention to what you're doing, or you're going to miss a stitch. Or if you have to count your stitches, you're counting. Um, depending on the difficulty of the pattern, and I am currently crocheting with yarn that it's not um, it's not woven. The strands are laid side by side. That's how it's rolled into the cake. I'm using the um, it's a wrap rainbow through Red Heart, and like I said the strands are not woven together. It's not a worsted yarn. And it is a fine um, one weight, so it tangles easy, and it also because um, you're having to catch all four strands on your hook, you gotta pay really close attention. Um, for somebody who's used it, you know more more than I have, they probably can, you know, read a book, watch TV without even looking, and crochet. I'm an experienced crocheter. I have been crocheting for more than half of my life. Um, 
but just not familiar um, with that particular yarn. And I think it's a 60-40 blend. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's 40% 40, like 40 cotton, 60% acrylic, I think. It's really soft, but it does take patience and paying attention. Maybe this up, but um, yeah, so I'm working on that. I have a bunch of books, and I'm struggling finding one that's catching my attention. That's why my video that I said that about books and movies and shows that I'm going to be watching or am watching hasn't gone up yet because I haven't been watching anything and I haven't been reading anything. Um, I, I'm just, I don't know, I can't, I can't get into anything right now. And there's all kinds of things that I see that I want to watch or that I want to read, but then when I sit down to do it, the interest's gone at that point. My ADD is definitely rearing its ugly head, but I can sit down and focus on diamond painting. Um, listening to my true crime podcast both on my podcast player app as well as um, a couple true crime YouTubers. So I've been watching a lot of that. Listen, cause all I, I don't even watch because there's really nothing to watch unless I want to start the person talking. But um, I listen to that. Um, I tried... The other night I tried to listen to one of them when I went to sleep. That did not end well for me. I actually had a nightmare. So I come to realize it's not wise to listen to that, I guess, for me while I'm laying there trying to relax to go to sleep because it gets into my psyche. So... Um, since I sleep, I can fall asleep listening to the rain outside. Like, I sleep like a baby. Coming from Ohio, um, a lot of rain in the fall and the winter. And, I mean, fall, spring, spring, summer, and fall, a lot of rain. And I remember being a kid laying in bed listening to the wall. The rain hit the aluminum siding of the house or the window and it would lull me right to sleep. So since we don't have much of that out here, um, and when we do get it, it's usually during the day when I'm awake, I started listening to ambient noise when I go to bed at night. And it's usually like a really heavy thunderstorm or um, with you know real heavy rain or a, there's one that's a winter storm. So you hear the whistling of the wind and the crackling of, of ice and stuff. Um, so it puts me right to sleep. I mean, I take my bedtime medicine. I turn on my um, Echo Dot with the ambient noise, tell them, tell her what, I won't say her name because I don't want anybody's to go off. Mine, anytime somebody mentions it, theirs goes off, mine goes off. I can't, so, but I fall asleep listening to that at night. Um, I was watching some, or listening to some on YouTube on my tablet, but the thing is, is I have to, my tablet that I have, I have a Samsung Galaxy, and I can open it, you know, it's open, on, I close it, it, well, of course, it, yeah, oh, it's because I'm not on anything, that's why, okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, let me see if I can show you. What happens? All right. 
So I was listening to Everybody Loves Raymond <laughs> on Peacock to fall asleep last night. Okay, well, so now it doesn't want to focus. But why doesn't it want to focus? Whoa, that's even worse. What's going on here? Ooh, sorry about that. Well, anyway, you see that this, it's on like this now. It tells me it can't. Okay, so this was what I was watching. Now, when I close this, I don't have a sleeper case. So it, see, it stays on. With having that closed and things playing, it gets really, really warm. So I don't want to burn up the tablet by having that on. If I leave it open, then I tend to find myself wanting to watch it or the brightness from the screen. Even if I dim it, it still, it, it keeps me awake. So, and it also then, my husband hears it too. Because with my back and that bed, we, or me and my husband's bed, we don't get along. My, that bed was perfect before I had my back surgery and before I had my neck surgery. But since then, I cannot sleep on that bed. It is horrible. It's a sleep number bed. I changed the settings. It does not work. So I sleep in, a, I got a new mattress a year ago this past May. And I sleep like a baby now on that bed. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back again. I wouldn't count on lasting for long because there's always somebody that's talking in the background. Even when I say I'm going to record. So if you hear a noise in the background, I apologize in advance. But anyhow, so yeah. I can't sleep though in dead in dead silence. I can I have to have something whether I can't and music I can't sleep with music. I tried that too. And then I'm laying there singing songs. <laughs> or a song will come on and I'll think about, you know, oh I'm trying to adjust this a little here. Oh, I remember when this song came out. I remember what I was doing when this song came out. And then it, it takes me someplace that I really don't need to be going to. So I'm better off either listening to something that I've already watched over and over and over again, like Everybody Loves Raymond, The Golden Girls, or I'll get real nostalgic and watch um, I Love Lucy, <laughs> Leave it to Beaver, Wings, something that is old and I've already watched over and over and over and over again. That way I have some noise that puts me to sleep but doesn't keep me interested in it. So yeah, um, a lot of times in the middle of the night um, I'll wake up, I'll see what time it is and I'll tell her to shut off and yeah, you know, so it doesn't run anymore. Um, especially if the fans, I have the fan, ceiling fan blowing on me and oscillating fan blowing on me and sleeping with two ice packs that I slide in my pillowcase. So they're like in between the pillow and the pillowcase. And then I lay my head on that. And then I have two ice packs that I lay on a towel and wrap them up and I lay on them. So now I'm laying on four ice packs with a ceiling fan and an oscillating fan that the oscillating fan is like right next to the bed, like literally a foot or two from the bed and it's blowing directly on me. So sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and I'll get chilly. So I'll turn that off. And if I turn that off, then I have to turn the dot off or everybody upstairs is gonna hear it. So, It's, and without the medicine, I don't sleep at all. If I don't take the medicine to go to bed at night. I'm not sleeping. Because um, I'm getting muscle 
spasms, and Charlie horses in my legs at night. So I need that medication to help reduce them. I don't get them as bad on the medicine, but I still get them enough that they'll wake me up. And I need to find girls. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what's causing them because I'm drinking a lot of water. Um, I go to bed every night with a 24 ounce bottle of water. I drink a 24 ounce bottle of water between dinner and going to bed. And throughout the day I'm drinking water, even though I've got my coffee, I also have water I'm sitting here drinking as well. I bought bananas last week and ate three bananas. And I know probably it's gonna take a period of time to get the vitamin K in me, or I'm gonna get the uh, potassium in me. But even eating those bananas, I still ended up getting a couple of Charlie horses throughout the week. So I'm, I'm really not sure what's causing them. I'm not doing anything out of the normal in my daily routine. So, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know what, what's going on with that. And I don't know if the heat has something to do with it, which it probably does. And there's nothing I can do about the heat. Um, and I don't have enough ice packs for my legs. Um, the only ice packs other than the ones that I'm using I have are, they're little small ones. They're like literally this big. So like but for a bump on the head or, you know, a burn or, you know, something, something real small. Um, I'm going to need to go to Walgreens because the ones I got from Walgreens, they're about this, this long. Uh, so wide. Two of them side by side end up being about this long in length and you know they fit perfect in my pillow. They're nice and thin so they don't bulk up my pillow and then they have like a cloth um, covering on it. They're it's like kind of like the back of a of a diamond art club painting. Um, it's a gel pack so the outside is just like the tarpaulin that's on the back of the Diamond Art Club. Um, so they don't slide around in my pillow, which is nice. The problem is, is they don't stay cold for an awful long time. Um, so I would wanna get a couple more. So if I wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or to get something to drink, or I'm just rolling over and I realize that they are um, warm, I can get up and take them downstairs, throw them in the freezer, and get the backups. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, talking about ice packs. <laughs> now, I'm the, basically, they're just for me to cool off, though, because I, um, I don't put them on my back. The ones that go on my back are the ones I'm laying on for my body, and... I'm not laying on my back. I can't sleep on my back. I'm sleeping like on my stomach, half on my stomach, half on my side. I have a big body pillow that I put behind me so I can kind of lay on my back, but not flat on my back because I can't do that. Um, and then I have a king, I mean a um, California queen like pillow. It's bigger than the standard queen size pillow, but um, smaller than a king. You know, it's, it's long, but it's longer than a queen size pillow, standard queen, but smaller than a king size. <coughs> that I put between my knees and my ankles. So it's like right in between the, from the knees down to the ankles. Which that starts out to be nice and cool on the body because your pillowcase is nice and cool, but then it ends up getting warm too. I need one of those cooling pillows that stays cool. Um, I've looked them up, 
but I have a problem spending that kind of money on a pillow. It's ridiculous. Um, is that, prices for comfort is ridiculous. If you want something to be comfortable, you better be ready to pay the pretty penny. That's just like the doctor suggested that I get one of those um, chair pillows that'll help adjust my hips and put my hips in proper spot while I'm sitting. Um, it's like, a, and it has a memory foam to it. You know, memory, it's made out of memory foam, I guess. He suggested this um, because, you know, I said a lot. He said, if you're gonna set a lot, he said, it would be good to have. Yeah, I'm not about to spend like $40 on that. It's just not gonna happen there either. Um, uh, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. There's, I have bills to pay off. I'm not trying to create more. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. I did stop my physical therapy because I think it was helping in some aspects, but hurt, you know, causing more problems in others. I am, I think that's where a lot of my Charlie horses were coming from and they weren't having me do real, um, strenuous therapy. But I think it was flaring things up. So um, I talked to my surgeon and we decided that until I get my MRIs on cervical spine and thoracic, it would be a good idea to hold off because there might be more going on than we think and I could be aggravating it and making it worse. So yeah, I'm not doing physical therapy right now, which I'm okay with it to be honest because getting up and having to go and do that and rush because I was like having to rush my son to work and then rush home here to get ready to go to therapy. I'd go to therapy. I'd come home, and by the time I got home, it seemed like it was time to leave to go get my son. And I don't like to be out that much, even in, in the winter months. Not just because it's hot, because I don't like to go out when it's hot at all, but in the winter months, as much as I like to be out in the cooler temperatures, I don't like to be out. I want to be home. So when I have to go out, that causes me to, to have anxiety. I talk myself out of appointments all the time because it's like, oh, I gotta go out. Yeah, I don't want to. So I call and cancel the appointment because like, I don't want to go out. If I have to go out, if it's not life or death, I'm not going. The only appointments that I do keep without fail are my son's appointments, of course. I have to take him to his appointments and my orthodontist and dentist appointments. Those ones I will not cancel. Or of course, if I need to, if I have, if I run out of refills on my prescript, any prescriptions, I have to go in to get those filled. Um, but in a 90 day prescription usually lasts me five or six months because you know, I don't take it as, I take my medicine as prescribed. What I take at bedtime, I'm supposed to take three times a day and I only take it at bedtime. So, you know, he gives me 90 days at three times a day. That means each prescription has what, 270 pills. So it lasts me, like I said, about six, five, six months. I mean, on really bad days, I'll, I will take more than what I you know normally take, but I always still take less than what the prescript, the doctors prescribed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's going on there. Sleep's not been good. Um, my son's been working a lot. He got scheduled. This is past like two or three schedules. 
They've been giving him more and more hours, which is great. He's loving, you know, he's loving the paychecks. He's not happy about getting up and having to go to work. He's like, you know, I need a day off. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm like, oh my God, see so when you're 16, you don't even know what it's like to like, you know, have to work that full 40 because he hasn't had a full 40 yet. He's gradually started with like 24. Well, he was starting initially when he got the job in January. They were giving him like 10, 12, 14, 15 hour weeks. I'm like, this better not last long. Then it went up to like 19, 20. And, but he, they did, he, they were calling him in or asking him to, like on a day off, they would call him in. Or if he already was scheduled to work, they'd ask him to come in early or stay late, but he still wasn't getting even 30 hours. But over the past, let's say month, they started gradually working him up to where he's, they were scheduling him <clears throat> 25, 27 hours. But the past two schedules, they've scheduled him 38 hours. And their day shift, which he does not like. He wants to work the night shift. But um, he is working from 8 to 3.30 this is his first day off since Tuesday. And then he works tomorrow through Thursday, I think. I think that's what his new schedule is. <clears throat> um, so I still have to go to get up early. So I've been trying to go to bed early. Er than normal. Okay. <laughs> I had to throw that er there because early for me could be 11 o'clock. Okay. That's early. Early for me is 11, 12 o'clock because I'm usually up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. So I am going to bed earlier, but I'm trying to get myself in bed even earlier than 11 or 12. I'm really trying to be in bed by 10. Um, and he does have to work tomorrow because, you know, since I take medication to help me sleep and help with the muscle and nerve pain it is a one of a, one of the medications is an opioid um so it does um i need to be awake and get coffee in me to kind of help dissipate the effects of the medication i've never been one that can just jump out of out of a dead sleep and jump in my car and drive that well, it does not have it, it's it I mean I've done it but it it's not good I'm white knuckling the steering wheel I I need to be awake for a bit before I'm driving so um he likes to be at work a half hour before he starts his shift so if he starts at eight he wants to be there of course for 30 minutes 7 30 it takes us like 10 minutes to get to where he works. So we live about 20 after. Um, so I'm trying to get up no later than 6.30. That way I can get the coffee in me, get the Sandman to leave my eyes, and, um, you know, get my bearings together so a couple times last week i was up it was like 5 30. and no i didn't mean 6 if i said 6 45 i meant 5 45. trying to be up by quarter till six that way i'm fully awake and functioning to drive now last week a couple times i woke up at 5 30. so i had to go to the bathroom or I was rolling over trying to get comfortable and realized what time it was and I thought, you know what, it's not even worth going back to sleep. The alarm's going to start going off in 15 minutes. So I was getting up early and I was dragging butt by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for a nap. And um, 
then if I would take a nap, then now, of course, that's going to screw up my sleep at night. So I'm just struggling with that, trying to make sure he gets to work because I don't want to make him late for work. That would be horrible if he's late to work at my cost. So, And I'm ready for, you know, winter to come. I look forward to the fall um, because that's one thing. I do always sleep better in the winter time. <clears throat> um, oops, sorry, bumped my cup. Because, well, it's cooler, but it's cozier. It's, you know, it's cozier to climb in your bed. You just, you know, you want to drift off into that peaceful sleep. I love hot tea as much as I love coffee. And coffee is life. I drink a pot a day by myself of, break, of, of hot coffee. And then I make an iced coffee as well. So I drink a lot of coffee um, during the summer and winter. But well, winter so in the winter time, it's coffee in the morning and hot tea in the evening. And I love to try all different types of teas. I don't like. I let me <clears throat> back up. I don't like green tea at all. Um, and I don't like like floral teas, like hibiscus tea and dandelion tea, any of those floral flavors. I like the fruity flavors. Um, Earl Grey is my absolute, hands down, favorite tea. And the Oriental tea that they serve at the Chinese restaurant, the hot tea, I forget what that's called. Um, I have it in my wish list on Amazon. And I constantly look and think about ordering or, you know, ordering it, but I, I don't. Um, maybe one day I will, but I forget what it's called. But I love that tea. I remember being a kid going to a Chinese restaurant in Ohio. It was called the Great Wall of China. And then there was also um, an, a Japanese restaurant called the Panda not Panda Express, like the fast food stuff. We know this was actually called the Panda Inn. It was up in Akron, Ohio. And it was like, like a buffet style Japanese restaurant with the most incredible food. And their Japanese tea. I could, they would come in the little pot, I would come in the, the little teapot. And you would have your little teacups that would look very similar to these. It was amazing. I could drink that. I mean, they kept having to come back and fill up with hot water. And you'd have all the tea bags inside of it. Maybe the, the tabs would be sticking outside of the pot. But they'd just keep adding hot water to it. And when me and my, it was me and my mom, my brother, and my father. Just the, just the four of us and the two of us were kids. And they'd fill that thing three or four times. My mom would get so mad at me because I'd be up all night long peeing. <laughs> just, please. And we always got the decaffeinated one, so we didn't have to worry about me bouncing off the walls. Which I find it funny because later in life, I can drink a pot of coffee and go to sleep. Coffee wakes me up in the morning, but it doesn't keep me awake at night. Neither does tea. Um, now, tea actually puts me to sleep. That's why I don't drink it in the morning as much as I would like to. I mean, I will occasionally. Like, tomorrow morning, I will be having hot tea because Pippa, if you see my other video, Pippa sent me Australian twining. I think that's how you say it. Um, a tea bag. Oh, my God. It's a breakfast tea. I, run, I can't wait till winter to try it. So... I'm going to have it tomorrow morning with some toast. But, um, yeah, if I drink tea in the morning, it's generally, I just want to go back to bed. Because tea to me is relaxing. And, um, so, yeah, it, it's just funny. I told, you know, told my mom how you always made me drink decaffeinated things because you said I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Yeah, well... I, I drink Diet Coke throughout the day. 
I drink um, coffee. I actually add espresso to my coffee. Um, I get these espresso pods that I add to my existing espresso bean. We grind. I grind my own coffee. I get the whole beans. I grind it and I grind it as I need it. And then I have this powdered espresso shot that I add to the ground coffee because it, it comes ground. <clears throat> yeah. And when I go to Starbucks to get coffee or to Dutch Brothers or the coffee bean or wherever, I happen to decide I want to stop and get a coffee. No matter what I get, I always ask for a double shot. Sometimes, depending on how hard things are that day, sometimes I'll get a, a triple shot. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get one of the big Red Bulls. The blueberry and the peach Red Bull are my two favorite Red Bulls. I don't like the monster. I think that's disgusting as far as I'm concerned. Every other, you know, everyone else might like it. That's great, but for me, I don't. But I love the peach and the um, blueberry Red Bull. And they also had one during Christmas. I'm hoping it comes back because if it does, I'm going to stock up on it. They had a cranberry Red Bull that was amazing. So, yeah, um, it doesn't no matter how much coffee I drink or, you know, I have no problem falling asleep with my mental brain. It's the physical part that throws things off. <clears throat> so, it helps with the bedtime medicine to put me to sleep. Right, what's my next draw that I'm going to work on? So, yeah. So we had a big storm today, like I was saying. We had lots of rain. Um, I actually took some video of it and sent it to, to Sandy. The one I'm doing these paintings for. Because um, she knows how much I like the rain. And we talked for a bit on the phone today. It's the first time we actually talked. Usually we message on, on Facebook Messenger, but I was like, why are we doing this? So we've been talking now. You know, we've been friends on Facebook for since December. These drills are so bad. Oh my God. And I am placing them. It doesn't matter if I checkerboard them or if I multi-place them or if I single place them. And hold on one second, please. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this short hair in a few minutes. Go another 15 minutes and then I'm going to have to get off of here. I'm going to take the dog out for a walk and then um, my son's going to go to bed and i got to clean up a few things around here. And then I think I'm going to try to go to bed too. And actually maybe try and find some of my book, you know, get into my book. I don't know. I try to get a good night and sleep tonight. Um, I did a ton of housework yesterday, like literally my whole house. I cleaned. I have three bathrooms. I cleaned them all, like, like cleaned them from top to bottom, inside and out. And I have a Bissell crosswave for um, hard floors, so I crosswaved my kitchen. All three bathrooms, my laundry room, the entryway to my and from my front door. My entryway takes this tile and it's all the way from the front door, clear all the way across the front room into the kitchen. So my front room is like 30 by 15. So it's 30 feet of tile in the front here. So I did all the cross waving and I said my laundry room. My bathroom is a huge bathroom. Our master bathroom off of our bedroom is huge. It's all tile. So I did that. Um, I washed two loads of towels. I washed my dog's bed sheets. Um, I went through cabinets and got rid of stuff that are partial bottles, 
that I mean when I say partial, I mean like there might be that much of something left at the bot in the bottom of the bottle. Um, I washed out trash cans. I made homemade spaghetti sauce and we had spaghetti and meat sauce and garlic bread for dinner last night. Um, uh, clean my son's room because he cannot, this kid cannot keep his room clean and it, it drives me nuts. I can't have a, I can't have unmade beds. I can't have clothes on the floor. Yes, I have OCD in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things that really just set me off with that. I can't help it. Um, first off, I was raised that way that as soon as you wake up, you get out of bed, you make your bed. If you don't want to fully make it, at least straighten it up. You know, straighten the sheets up, fold them back, fix your pillowcases on your pillows. Don't let the pillowcases hanging off the pillowcase, or you know, don't let the pillowcases be hanging off the pillows. Fluff them up, straighten them up, or make the bed completely. Um, I was also, I'm also an ex-Navy wife, so my ex-husband, you know, he was a stickler about how things were done because it was, you know, pounded in his head in boot camp and in the military of that's how things should be. So, and I also worked in hospitals and nursing homes and stuff, and that was what our job was. As soon as we got our patient up, we made the bed. Or if it was the if that was the time of the week, because each week the patient's beds got me, um, the sheets got replaced unless, you know, there was an accident or something. But once a week, we would strip the sheets and put clean sheets on the beds. So if that was strip stripping the bed day, the sheets came off, clean sheets went on, but we had to make their beds. So that's just got ingrained into my brain that I can't not have beds made. That annoys me to no end. And I can't stand to have clothes on the floor. When there's a laundry basket, I have two of them in the hallway. And I put them in the hallway so I didn't have to have laundry baskets in every room. I thought that was stupid. So take your clothes off. You can't even... My son's room and me and my husband's room, that's our actual room, we can't come down, through the hallway and down the steps without walking past the basket because I have the baskets at the end of the hall, which is right, and then I have, they're right across from the laundry room because my laundry room, I don't have room to have the laundry baskets in there because the dryer gets in the way when you open the door. So you cannot, I can walk, and when I walk straight out of the room that I sleep in, the laundry baskets are right to the left. So no matter what, we can't go downstairs without walking past those baskets or those hampers. And my husband's the only person and myself are the only person that puts clothes in the basket. My son, he will come home from work and as he goes upstairs, as he walks up the steps to change, I'm gonna go up and change, I'm like, fine, go up, change, take your, clothes, your work clothes and put them in the laundry basket or you know, the hamper. I'll come downstairs. I said, what'd you do with your work clothes? Put them in the hamper. I'll go upstairs later on. They're laying on the floor. He just like crawled right out, climbed right out of them. And wherever he climbed out of them, that's where they stayed. Just like, if he keeps it up, I'm going to stop washing his clothes. And he does not know how to use my washer. And he's not allowed to use my washer. Because I'm not having suds. And it's all digital. And I'm, no, no. I will wash clothes. But if he doesn't start bringing, picking his clothes up and putting them in the basket when he takes them off, I'm not washing his clothes. That's going to be a thing. So he better start um, cleaning up after himself. He's almost 17 years old. It's time. Yeah, it's time. So, yeah. With doing all that yesterday, I made a firm decision that I wasn't doing anything today. Today's, today or tomorrow. Because I made enough spaghetti that we had leftovers of spaghetti tonight, but there's still a lot of sauce. So 
I'm going to make, I'm torn between either baked ziti or baked manicotti tomorrow because I have cream cheese, I mean, um, um, ricotta cheese that I need to use. It's in the refrigerator, so I'm going to be doing, it's probably just going to be ziti and probably not, it's not even going to be ziti. I have the penne noodles, but I'm probably just going to make like goulash, just boil the noodles, pour the sauce in it. It's going to be another hot day. Who wants to have the oven on? Not me. But, so all I have to do is boil noodles tomorrow for dinner. I can do that. Um, the only thing else I, today that I did do is I did wash two loads of dark clothes and I have a load of whites that need washed tomorrow. And then I'm probably going to go ahead and strip our bed sheets and wash those things. But beyond that, that's all I'm going to do. And doing laundry is not a big deal. The problem it'll be is making them beds, making three beds wears you out. I can, that can be my only thing I do in a day and I'll be tired from it because we have, I have a pillow top mattress. My son has a double pillow top mattress. My husband's bed that he sleeps in is the easiest mattress because it's a, it's sleep number. So, the mattress actually that he's sleeping on is the, um, I'm having the chambers, the air chambers are underneath, but it's a memory foam that I, we have, that we, it's, it's a sleep number memory foam. We put that on the top instead of underneath the chambers because we turn the memory foam so much so it kind of stays even. That it's a pain to have to strip the bed completely down, unzip the mattress protector, and you know, change it that way. So we just leave it on top and then put a second mattress protector over top of it. So that's the easiest bed to make. But my cell, my bed, my mattresses, even though it's not a double pillow top, it's still extremely heavy. And then my son's being the double top pillow top is extremely heavy. So that's what he'll be doing when he comes home from work tomorrow is helping me make the beds or have my husband help me. If they're all, you know, if I get all the sheets done before he gets off work, he can help me make the beds. But other than that, yeah, I'm going to diamond paint. Oh, I keep bumping this and I'm so sorry. I'm going to diamond paint. I'm going to try and watch some stuff on Netflix tomorrow. Who knows? I might even do a video. I might actually get myself to sit down. Maybe that's what I'll do tonight. I'll go upstairs and I'll sit in my, sit in the bedroom and I'll go through Netflix and Amazon or my Kindle and write down a list of books and shows. I can do that. And then tomorrow I'll have a video to present to you with all that information. But I need to get the dog out for a walk. I need to get my son up to bed. So I'm going to go ahead and call this video done. I hope that you had a wonderful Saturday. I hope you have an even more wonderful Sunday. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified um, anytime that I put up a video and like today, Three videos are going up today, which is very unlike me, um, especially considering I haven't done videos in a while. Um, I did that bit, the videos you know, last week, but then things have happened. It's been busy. Um, my son starts school, not this coming week, but on the 10th, he starts school. So um, just been trying to get things in place. He's still going to continue doing virtual um all distance and virtual learning. It seems to work just fine for him. He'd prefer to do that, especially with the job. He doesn't want the job to, air school to affect his job. And if he does it virtual, then the only time that he's going to have to um, be face-to-face -face with the teacher is if he needs to schedule a Google Meet. So it, it's gonna work fine. I mean, he did it from January to June, um, or January to May working and going to school so um, but with everything that's going on and the numbers here in Vegas aren't well 
he just does not feel comfortable um, sitting in the classroom. Even though it's only three hours a day, one day a week, he doesn't feel comfortable with that, as well as having to wear his mask during the time. Because at work, he only has to wear the mask if he's in the store. And most of the time, if he's in the store, it's a brief period. Um, so he can handle 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Most of the time he's outside um, gathering carts and stuff, so he doesn't need to have his mask on then. But we are going to continue, like he said, with the virtual. We've got to take his computer in this week and get it checked, make sure everything's running properly. Um, get him on a schedule, you know, uh, you know. It's not just go to work, come home, play video games, because if he's working during the day, it means when he comes home, he's got to focus on schoolwork. I'm hoping that they actually put him on nights when school starts. That way he can do his schoolwork during the day. He only has to put in three or four hours a day. So if he gets up at seven o'clock in the morning, starts his schoolwork by eight, he can be done by 12 and he can go into work at like three or four o'clock. Um, I'm also hoping that they give him two days off during the week instead of um, having him have the weekends off. But, you know, this is his junior year, but it's also his graduating year. So he's got to kill it. Um, he's got a really good GPA. Summer school really helped bring up his GPA. He's got a 3.871, I think. That's what it was. I know it's a 3.8 something. Um, so yeah, I can't ask for more than that, but he's got to keep that up because of his scholarship. So, and it, since it is his last year of high school, I want him to go out with flying colors. He's worked hard to get to this point. He's worked hard to earn the right to graduate early. So, um, I want him to just blow it out of the water. So there's going to be a lot going on. Um, I have an orthodontist appointment this week. I have to call the dentist, see if I can get in because I want to go ahead and get my teeth cleaned. So I want to try and see if I can get in on Tuesday to get my teeth cleaned. If I can, then I'm going to call Monday and see if I can come in early Tuesday morning at the orthodontist, have them take everything off. I'll go to my dentist appointment and then on Thursday, I'll go back and have my adjustment done on my braces. So I've got that going on too, and still having to get him to work and make sure that I'm back from everything before he gets off work. So yeah, that's a lot. But I will, um, like I said, I'm gonna get off of here. I will go ahead and do the book stuff and the video stuff and um, present with the video again tomorrow. So, as I was saying, videos are going to be are, will be sporadic, but I am trying to get on track and trying to get scheduled. Um, the planner I got, I'm not thrilled with it, so I'm saving money to try and get a better planner so I can plan these things out. And I'm always better if I'm following a schedule. So I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks for stopping in to see me. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you wouldn't, if it wouldn't be too much of a problem, could you share the channel, get, get out there. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye, guys. Thanks for stopping by.